where he could have gone, where he, what he could have done with her body, what did he do with her body, what, what happened inside of that residence. Still so many questions about Josh Powell and still no justice for Susan Powell. As another Christmas has gone by for her family and friends still waiting for closure. And this week, KSL's true crime investigative podcast, Cold, is unveiling the details of several secret searches for Susan Powell. KSL's Dave Colley has more on the efforts you didn't hear about during the first days after her disappearance. I'm here in Utah's West Desert, just uh, to the east of Dugway Pass, which is behind me, at a very specific spot. The reason I'm here is because during the search for Susan Powell, a group with search dogs came out repeatedly to the West Desert in the hopes of finding where she might have been buried or disposed of. And on one of those trips, their dogs actually found a buried plastic bag at this very spot. Uh, the searchers turned that information over to the West Valley City Police Department. Detectives came out here and did their own search, but they couldn't find anything. Cadaver dogs hid in more than one place, leading police from the desert to the edge of Utah Lake. A seemingly plausible lead had investigators tracking trash to a landfill. It is Wednesday, the 6th of January, 2010. And cameras probed deep underground in their daunting task of searching hundreds of abandoned mines. Police, determined to find Susan, faced a nearly impossible task. There was a lot of great guys that worked on this and, and gals, and uh, we worked our hearts out just laying in bed and trying to sleep uh, with all of uh, everything running through your head as to scenarios and theories and evidence and you know where he could have gone, where he, what he could have done with her body, what did he do with the body, what, what happened inside of that residence because there was no signs inside of the residence to, or clues to kind of give us an idea of what happened. Retired Detective Ellis Maxwell, the lead investigator on the case, says it was frustrating to be criticized by the community for what on the outside might have looked like a lack of effort, but on the inside was anything but. It's tough, especially when they're kind of personally attacking, right? Because you know how hard you're working, and you know how hard your peers are working, you know how dedicated you're supervisors and, and your administrative staff is and everybody's working for this common goal in episode seven of the podcast we'll dig deeper into these secret searches with new information never detailed publicly before including what police found and where else the clues took them he had a plan he followed through with his plan and he was confident and he was confident that he wasn't gonna disclose anything and I believe he was confident that he knew we wouldn't find her. Dave, thank you. Episode 7, Cold, available now wherever you get podcasts or listen at coldpodcast.com or ksltv.com.